Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today, we're making gouda or chowda. Yes, I know this is a remake of an old video, but I had a unique opportunity. A company called Lauda reached out to me from the Netherlands and said, Gav, do you want to make Gouda using our unique molds? And by unique molds, I've got a couple here. So this is the one kilogram uh, Gouda mold. And the great thing is you don't need to use a cheesecloth. How good's that? So the shape of the cheese is actually quite perfect. Uh, these molds are fantastic. I had no troubles with them except for pressing. Now, and that is only because I didn't have the correct press to use. Now, they're used in commercial operations, but they can be used manually, which I found out. It has micro perforated holes all the way through, which is the reason you don't need a cheesecloth. So this is the one kilo one, which I used during the cheese making video to get a perfectly formed gouda. And then there is another one, which I'm not gonna use during this video, but I will in the subsequent video. And this is a, oh, oh, a three kilogram mold. So essentially I would need 30 liters of milk to make curds big enough to fit into this one, or maybe, maybe 25. But certainly I found with this mold, um, the normal 10 kilo, a 10 litre batch that I, um, I use worked perfectly and had the right size at the end. Anyway, let me get on and show you how I made Gouda with the louder molds. So first of all, let's have a look at these molds. This is a micro perforated mold and you can see that there are many, many holes within it and uh, there are actually thousands of these tiny little holes and the reason they are is to give good drainage without the need for a cheesecloth also because it doesn't use a cheesecloth it also has all these tiny little holes in the follower as well so because they're there you don't need to turn the cheese over during pressing you can just give it one single press and it will form perfectly however i didn't know that when i made the video so you'll see me turning it over during the show. So first of all, sanitize your equipment. I'm using Milk by Inglenook Dairy as well during this video. The ingredients, 10 litres or 10.5 quarts of whole cow's milk, an eighth of a teaspoon of MA11 or MO30 mesophilic starter culture, a half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride, which has been diluted in a quarter of a cup or 60 millilitres of non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of single strength rennet, I'm using IMCU 200, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. You'll also need an 18% brine solution, plus you'll need some cheese wax. I've got it listed as optional because you can vacuum pack this cheese. So pop the thermometer in and we're bringing up to a target temperature of 29 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So because my little setup there does tend to heat up, I've taken it off of the pot of steaming water just so it doesn't get too high during the ripening process. Just move my little toothpicks, which I put under the uh, pot to let the steam escape. Right, so when they're all set up, we're gonna add the starter cultures to the milk. So to sprinkle that over. Now these are direct vat set or direct vat inoculated cultures. You don't need to make them into a mother culture beforehand. So just cover that up and allow them to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, 
We're going to give them... Oh, that's funky. We're going to give them a stir to incorporate them into the milk. So just give that a quick stir top to bottom to get them through the milk evenly to allow the little bacteria to start eating. Now, there's no ripening period. We're going to add the calcium chloride solution straight away. So give that a stir through the milk as well. Now, calcium chloride helps set a better curd when you're using a pasteurized milk. So then we're going to add the rennet solution and give that a stir as well. Now, we don't stir that for more than one minute. Just checking the temperature, make sure it hasn't gone up. So it's still at 29, which is great. And still the milk. That means stop it from swirling around. I'm going to put the lid back on. I'm going to allow it to set for 40 minutes. So 45, 40 minutes later, we're just going to check for a clean break. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to put in my curd knife at a 45 degree angle and then turn it sideways and see if that looks clean. It's not too bad, but I think I'm going to wait. Now, if you don't think your curd set is very good, then just wait for another 10 minutes and then check it again. So 10 minutes later, we're going to check for a clean break again. That actually looks a lot firmer, so that's good. Thumbs up by Gav, fantastic. And now we're going to cut the curds. We're going to cut the curds into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes. So I'm doing the horizontals there and the verticals with my curd knife. Now if you don't have a curd cutter like you saw in the first instance, then you can cut the curd at a 45 degree, degree angle all the way around and that will give you the same result. So just make sure that the curds are cut an even size as best you can because size does matter in this case. Okay, pop the lid on and we're going to allow them to heal for five minutes. So five minutes later, a little bit of whey sitting on the top, which is absolutely fantastic because it just means that the curds are starting to weep the whey. I'm going to stir for five minutes, very gently at, st at the start, so we don't fracture any of the curds. Now, if there are any big ones, just cut them with the side of the spoon. So the milk's holding its temperature quite well, the curds and whey, I should say. And they look fairly evenly cut. Now, during the stir stirring process, the whey is coming out, as you can see there. So that was the five minutes of stirring, all sped up, and we're going to allow the curds to settle now for five minutes. So five minutes to later, you'll see that the curds have sunk a little bit to the bottom, and the whey sitting on the top, which is perfect because Gouda is a washed curd cheese. This reduces the acidification in the cheese and gives a much milder cheese. I'm going to dip off one litre or four cups of whey. I'm going to replace that with some water that I've heated up to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit and replace it with the four cups or the one litre. So we're going to give that a stir so it doesn't mat, which these things tend to do when you add hot water to them. Now, the temperature should have gone up to 33 degrees Celsius. It's fairly close, a little bit. We'll see how it goes when I stir it. That's 92 Fahrenheit. Now, if it hasn't quite reached 33, you can actually turn the heat on 
and warm it up a little bit, which is absolutely fine. In fact, that's what I did during this cheese make. Now, it didn't take long to go up the extra degree and a half. So just make sure that you don't forget that the heat's on and it keeps heating up too high and get distracted. Anyway, we're going to stir and wash the curds with that water for 10 minutes. See how I turned the heat off long ago. In the meantime, heat up 5 litres or 5 quarts of non-chlorinated water to 45 degrees Celsius or 112 Fahrenheit. Now I've got to the end of the stirring there and you can see the curds have shrunk a fair bit. They're about the size of a peanut at the moment. So I'm going to just cover that and allow that to settle now for another five minutes so I can get to all that whey. So five minutes later. I'm going to use my sieve and dip off the whey to the level of the curds. So you keep taking the whey off until you can see the curds. Very nice dipping. There we go. There's the curds. So we're going to replace all of that. And the, the easiest way to see how much water to add is you can see the line around the pot where the whey used to sit. Before we do that, we're just going to give it a quick stir to prevent any matting when we add the warm water in. This just breaks up the curd bundle, slab, what have you. So there we are, all broken up. You can see this the curds mat quite easily if you don't stir them. Okay, so we're going to get our hot water, so they are water at 45 Celsius, 112 Fahrenheit, and replace the whey that you just took out. So we're going up to a line that's on the side of the pot, left by the whey. There we go. Now I'm fairly close there. I think I might have not put enough water in, but we're going to check the temperature first because if it's too low or too high, you can adjust it. So if it's too low, the temperature, then we add a little bit more hot water. And if it's too high, then we can add some cold water. So the new temperature should be 37 Celsius or 98 Fahrenheit. So just a quick check, and that's a little bit over 37 Celsius, so 2.2 .2 degrees higher than it should be. So I'm just going to get some cold non-chlorinated water. And we're just, just going to uh, put that in and adjust the water temperature. So I'm only putting a little bit in at a time. And then check the give it a stir, then check the temperature. So nearly there, nearly at 37. 0.7 a degree too high. So we'll put a little bit more in. Give it a stir as we're going along. Let's have a look now. Just about perfect, so that'll do. No more water. So we're going to stir that for 20 minutes. And during that, it washes the curd again. So this reduces the acid in the final cheese, making a very mild cheese. And as you can see, it's about the size of a cooked baked bean. The curds, that is. And we can stop stirring now. So we're going to allow that to settle so we can drain it off. So about 10 minutes will do. And all of your curds should sink to the bottom of the pot. Just makes this step easier so we're just draining off that water and transfer it into a cheesecloth line colander 
just for a quick drying. I'm just going to break up the curds into small pieces because during that 10 minutes of waiting, uh, settling, it, it kind of matted together a little bit. Makes it easy to put into the basket. Okay, so I'm going to transfer the curds into the basket. Note that there's no cheesecloth in the basket. Just put the curds straight in there. Obviously, I've sanitized the basket beforehand and clean, or cleaned it and then sanitized it. But anyway, transfer all your curds in. So this mold fits the curds for a 10 litre make of cheese. Okay, so all the curds are in there. Now, I, my press, the, the, the basket would not fit under the press. So I had to improvise. Um, so we topped it with the follower. Just gave it a gentle squeeze there. I put a tea towel on cloth, on, on, on the tea towel on top of the follower. And then I had this crazy idea that this pot, this cast iron pot would work because it, it is uh, about 5.8 kilograms, so it's six kilos. So we're going to apply pressure, six kilos or 13 pounds of pressure for 30 minutes with this balancing act, which is not working so well, as you can see there. Keeps moving. It's not the most stable press. But we do fix it later on anyway. So after 10 minutes of standing there, standing there looking at it, I actually put a board underneath that gave it a little bit more stability. So this initial press uh, went okay. I didn't have too many troubles. The follower did move a little bit. And the pot didn't tumble onto the floor, so that was a good bonus. So now we don't have to do this step, so I've been told, by the makers of the mould. You don't need to turn the cheese. The mould is designed to be a one press only, which saves you a lot of time. Anyway, but the cheese does come out quite nicely. And you can see there the shape looks lovely. Just little bits of cheese or curd there on the sides. Anyway, so we'll pop that back in. And we'll pop the follower on top. I'm going to apply 13 kilograms or 22 pounds of pressure for 12 hours. Now, I thought milk bottles would do, but uh, that's even more unstable. <laughs> As you can see, not working. Keeps falling over. In fact, we did have a tumble. Uh, the I had to tape the milk bottles together. But anyway, press aside, you can see that whey oozing out of all those tiny little holes and uh, coming away from the curds. Anyway, this is what happened. We, Kim and I came up with this fantastic idea. We said, so it doesn't fall off, we'll put it into the sink and press it and get it up to that 13 kilos that we needed. Anyway, I'm going to remove it and then I'm going to reverse it, the footage, so you can see what I did. So I had 8 kilograms of weight there in the bottles, maybe about 8.5. I had a kilogram of weight with the chopping board. I had five kilograms of weight with the cast iron pot, which I turned upside down, which actually made it very, very stable indeed, and pressed it um, into the right shape. So I took that off. So here in reverse, this is how I made the press. I put the cast iron pot, and then I put these boards in the side to stop it from toppling or moving in the wrong direction. I put this board on top. Then I put a cloth, I think. Yep, there we are, tea towel. And then the eight kilograms of weight. So I estimate it was about 13 kilograms of weight. Anyway, so with all that removed again, we're gonna have a look at what the cheese looks like after the pressing. So we're gonna remove that from the basket. There we go, much flatter than before. Good looking cheese, well formed, lovely, even rind and pressing. And there it is in all its glory. Maybe a slight bit of a wobble in the shape of the cheese, but with that press, what can you expect? 
Anyway, we're going to brine the cheese now. Put it in the brine solution for 12 hours, turning it at the six hour mark. In my nice brining pot. You can use any plastic container for brining. It doesn't have to be lap flash. Okay, so there's 12 hours on the clock. So at around the six hour mark, I just turned it over just to make sure it had an even brining, so even salt distribution through the cheese. So after the 12 hours, I've got my plastic mat there and I'm going to put the cheese on the drying mat. Let it drip off a bit first. There we go. Then we're going to allow that to air dry now. It's a good looking cheese. So it came out at 2.92 pounds, which is 1.323 kilograms. So we're going to air dry it until it's touch dry. Mine took uh, four days uh, because it's quite uh, cold at the moment here uh, and it turned it twice daily. So after it's air dry, uh, it touch dried, then we're going to wax it with two to three layers of cheese wax. Now I'm using red cheese wax because that's all I had available and that is what, what I'm using. So just making sure there's no bits of fluff or anything on the wax. I do have this wax covered up normally, so normally it's pretty good. You just keep them dipping in the side that's exposed till it dries, and then pop it in. Now, a bit of a tip, you can put the cheese into the freezer before you wax it uh, for about 10 minutes, and that cools down the surface of the cheese and makes the wax dry much, much quicker. So lots of dipping going on. Now I've got greaseproof paper there, that helps a lot. The wax doesn't tend to stick to it. So I'm just getting a spoonful also on the exposed part on the top and bottom of the cheese and just waxing that. Putting a couple of layers of wax on and there we go. So there's my Gouda, ready on the 11th of June, 2020. We're going to ripen that at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit for six weeks in my cheese fridge. Well, there you have it. That's how you make Gouda. Um, I will age it in the cheese fridge now for about six more weeks uh, now that it's air dried and waxed. And um, then we'll do a taste test on it later on. So sorry that this isn't the complete video than, that sometimes I manage to do. But like I said, taste test in six weeks time. So the molds performed perfectly. It was the lack of a press, a proper, let's say a Dutch press, uh, cheese press that I didn't have uh, was the main issue. So great thing is, and you, you saw that in the video that Kim and I came up with a fantastic way of getting 13 kilograms of pressure um, onto the cheese. Anyway, if you want to buy these molds, then there is a link in the description below um, to the Louder website. Well, thank you for watching, Curd Nerds. If you want any other cheese making supplies, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. And thank you to all the financial members, uh, YouTube members, and patrons who support the show financially. If you want to support the show financially, then you can check out the links in the description below. Well, thank you, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.